Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, we're working in the shop this morning uh, very early. We're trying to get some peace and quiet here on uh, John's uh, MB project. We've got his front axle here. Uh, I did finish up his T84 in Model 18 transfer case. It's got that real early uh, emergency brake setup. Uh, I do not like that one and it didn't last very long because there were so many problems on that one. But um, <clears throat> it's all together. It's got a new drum, it's got a new band, everything's adjusted and uh, that's ready for primer and paint. Uh, I'm getting set up on the front axle here and when I took that pinion bearing out, look at all these shims that were in there. Um, so I was very unsure uh, what the last guy did in here. So we know, oh, let me get this cover, we know that this took a hit at one time. There, there, uh, a lot of bad stuff happened in here at one point and I know it was related to the bolts coming out of the ring gear so these little clips cause more problems and more loose bolts than uh, you can imagine now, I've gone over this time and time again if you guys want to use these go right ahead uh, but your bolts very like, like all bolts that came out of this particular ring gear uh, I took out with my fingers Let's see if we can get in there on this there's the F mark on that. Uh, so Jonathan's complete drivetrain is Ford. And uh, whether it's Ford or any other maker, these are soft. The tabs are soft enough to bend. The bolt gets torqued. It squeezes that. It loses all its torque. There are the F mark bolts. There's a couple um, odd ones in there. So, like I always do, I put hardened washers, I put drilled head bolts, and I safety wire them, and I red Loctite these. Um, some guys don't like the way I do this. Some guys say it's not original, and this and that, and the other thing. It's better than grinding up your gears and stuff like that. Uh, this is how I do it, and um, I've never had a problem. But I do see 90% uh, of the World War II stuff that comes in here. Uh, these bolts are broken or loose. Like I say, every single one of these uh, was loose in the, in the um, lock there. And I took every single one of these out with my finger. So um, you could do it like this. You could do it another way. You could put the locks back in there. You could mess up your front and rear end. I, it doesn't matter to me. But I just the guys that do care... Uh, this is a foolproof way to do it. Uh, so I was unsure about the pinion there. So I do have, and these are hard to find, but um, I do have the original factory setup tool made by Miller. And this is a real lifesaver at, uh, at times. Uh, very hard to come by. I don't see these used much anymore. Um, the only way to get them would be like a guy like me is is dead and there's an auction or something and you get all my stuff. Um, but you can look around. I mean, sometimes you might find one. This is a fantastic way for checking pinion depth. And uh, I'll give you just a, quick, a, a brief uh, view of how it works. And uh, I won't go over the actual setup because there probably isn't too many people that have one of these tools. Okay, now this tool will hook on to the pinion. Um, you put your yoke on, you, you put all your stuff on. That hooks on there. You set your, your dial indicator, and that dial indicator will read directly on this surface, the, uh, the, um, the uh, cup surface of, of your bearing. Um, <clears throat> so... That surface right there is where it reads on. And there's a block, depending on what axle you have, 
there's a block for setting your indicator correctly okay so everything comes in the kit and I was concerned that there was too many shims in there and uh, I came up with uh, my opinion shims need to be 85 thousandths on World War II stuff the shims could be all over the place by the time the civilian Jeep came out uh, they had the um, I guess the machining process a little bit closer they were they were building them a little bit slower and they could get them right usually I don't see anything over a 35,000 shim on uh, on the later ones but World War II could be everywhere well whoever did this last one they only had like fives threes and tens so they put all those shims in there I'm gonna make it up with just these couple uh, it's better to use just a couple than all these here. You could get uh, even a tiny speck of dirt between those and stuff and you'll start picking up. But um, the package that was in here was 83 thousandths. That package. And I measured 85 thousandths. So we're going to go with the 85 thousandths shim pack. And um, we'll get the depth correct. Then we'll use these little guys to set the rotational torque and uh, then the pinion will be set correctly and then we'll start putting the uh, carrier bearings on and getting the backlash right so a uh, lot of work on this front end so far but uh, I'll get it right for you John don't worry about it uh, now let's take a look at some of the other components that came off the front and rear end okay that's what the drums look like now this is way over nine inches to begin with by the time I clean that up um, I have to take a quarter inch out of there to clean that up same thing on that one backing plates all look like this they are a disaster so uh, when you send me stuff like this uh, you know I have to change everything I have to change all the drums all the backing plates, we need all new shoes, wheel cylinders, springs, uh, anchor pins are messed up, cam adjusters are messed up. Uh, it does get expensive and um, there's really nothing I can do about it. The parts are just absolutely terrible that came on these axles. So, as always, um, lots of money needs to be spent on these things. But... Um, <clears throat> there's only one way to get it right and that's to uh, bring it back to factory specs so I'm gonna keep moving on this and uh, get some new drums I'll show you how we cut the swedges uh, re-swedge the drum on there and then put it on the brake machine and make sure everything's true but um, coming along John uh, little by little uh, it's a process but um, pieces are getting done and uh, we'll have a rolling chassis pretty soon. So hang in there. Uh, that's all I have for you today on John's project. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.